Right? Can you recognize? I like to, I always pray for myself, God, I thank you for the spirit of conviction. That I can recognize when I'm going too far. When I can recognize that when I need to stand up and remove myself. When I can recognize that I'm saying things that I shouldn't say. I pray conviction upon my husband. I pray conviction upon my children. I don't just pray blessings. How many of you know if you want the blessings, you better know you got to live by conviction. Right? Many of us want the blessings, but we don't want to live by conviction. And that's what you call putting on a form of godliness. God is a good God. God is a great I was just telling my husband, he came to set up this morning and he said, I got called in, I got to bring a ship in and I'll be right back to service. I said, better hurry up and come back. God has been good to you. God has been good to me. God has been good to our family. You got to know that God has been good. Amen? You got to know that God has been good. You cannot walk every day in your life thinking you have what you have because of you. My mom always tells me this. Without, always tells me this. Without the breath of life, you don't wake up in the morning. Never think you do what you do because of you. If it wasn't for God breathing life, hola. Hola. Until you, you don't wake up. What you have is because God's grace upon you. How many of you are thankful for God's grace? Amen. Right? And so the scripture was, even an ox knows its owner. And a donkey recognizes its master. But Israel doesn't know its master. My people don't recognize my care for them. I pray that we always recognize the voice of our master. That when he says stop, we know how to stop. Amen? I pray that when he says go, we know how to go. Again, I'm not going to dive into where we were. Just kind of giving you an update so you can jump into where we are today. Israel we, we, uh, refers to the southern kingdom, Judah. The people of Judah were sinning greatly and they did not care. At that time, that, that's kind of what was happening. A lot of sin was going on. The people really didn't care. They no longer even realized that they were sinning. God brought charges against the people of Judah through Isaiah because they had rejected the Lord. They forgot Him and they broke their moral and spiritual covenant yeah. with God. And this is where we went into Deuteronomy 28. How many of you appreciated learning about the blessings that God gives us? We jumped into Deuteronomy 28 and we started off at verse number 1. If you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully keep all His commandments that I'm giving you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the world. You will experience all these blessings if you obey the Lord your God. Your towns and your fields will be blessed. Your children and your crops will be blessed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be blessed. Your fruit baskets and, and breadboards will be blessed. And we talked about we want our breadboards blessed. Wherever you go and whatever you do, you will be blessed. In that church, whatever you do, wherever you go, God wants to make sure that you're blessed. The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. How many of you want to stand knowing that the Lord will conquer my enemies? The Lord will conquer your enemies when they attack you. They will attack you from one direction, but they will scatter from you in seven ways. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do. How many of you know that God is the only guarantee? You know how many purchase something and go like this? Oh, it's 100% guaranteed. And they come to find out that was if you did this. And if you did, oh man, I'm sorry, you only had 14 days. What do you mean? I thought it was 30 days or 60 days. Oh, it was 30 days if this, but in actuality, see, that's the reason why the Bible says, call every man a liar, but the word of God the truth. Yes. The Lord will guarantee a blessing on everything you do and will fill your storehouses with rain. The Lord your God will bless you in the land he is giving you. He didn't say he will bless you in the land that you go and get. He said he will bless you in the land that he is giving to you. That's the reason why I thank God that the word that says the, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Because if we go on our way to try and get our own, how many of you know, you might go, but blessings may not follow. 
Because the Lord will bless you in the land that He is giving to you. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in His ways, the Lord will establish you as His holy people. As, his, as He swore He would do. Then all the nations of the world will see that you are people claimed by the Lord and they will stand in awe of you. The Lord will give you prosperity in the land He swore to your ancestors to give you. Blessings, blessing you with many children, numerous livestock, and abundant crops. The Lord will send rain at the proper time from his rich treasury in the heavens and will bless all the work that you do. How many of you want this to be you? Church, this scripture is a blessing upon children of obedience unto God. Simple. All we got to do is line up our ways unto God. And he said, this is what I want to bless you with. It's not hard. How many of you know sometimes we make it hard? We make it hard. If you listen to these commandments of the Lord your God that I am giving you to you, and if you carefully obey them, the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. And you will always be on top and never at the bottom. You must not turn away from any of the commandments. Church, and let me stress that part. You must not turn away from any of the commandments. This is a good check right here. If you think, oh, I, I, I'm faithful, God. I'm faithful in serving you. I show up all the time. Why is this happening to me? Go right back to the scripture. You must not turn away from any of the commandments. So where does this leave you? Father, I examine myself to you. If there's anything, sometimes we know the very place. And it's that one thing that we don't want to confess it before God. And all God is saying, I already know what you're doing. I'm just waiting for you to confess. How I many of you know he's all seeing God? He's an all knowing God. And all he's saying is, all you really got to do is confess. Why confess? Why are we confessing? Because when you're confessing, you're giving it to him. When you're confessing, you're acknowledging, I know that this is wrong. When you're confessing, this, you're admitting where you are. See, God cannot give you and I and work with us if we're never willing to admit. Amen. How many of you know that? Now, when Isaiah was prophesying, he was telling them, if you go back and look, God brought charges against the people of Judah through Isaiah because they rejected the Lord, forgotten Him, and broken their moral and spiritual agreement or their covenant with Him as seen in Deuteronomy 28. What were we just reading? Deuteronomy 28. By breaking their agreement, they were bringing God's punishment upon themselves. This is why it's important that we really look at where we are. Yeah. So again, this is kind of following up on where we were, any of the commandments I'm giving you today, nor follow any other gods and worship them. So this is where we left off. Everybody following along where we left off last week? We were talking to the people of Jerusalem. People of Judah. And he talked about the curses that will be brought about them. He said, because you forgot your God. Because you forgot the covenant you made. Now the blessings that was given to you. Now will turn into curses to you and your family. We can get a chance to hit the curses. But how many of you are ready to jump into this? I don't want to listen to curses. If I can be honest with you. I don't want my family to be cursed. But if I don't hear the truth. Then I live with the form of godliness and I deny the power thereof. Because I don't want to hear the truth. And that's the one thing many of us sometimes we struggle with. We don't want to hear the truth. And then we turn around and say, well, it just feels like everybody's judging me. How many of you know sometimes that's God saying, that's me trying to get your attention? You got to listen to the truth. Amen. Now you look at this again. I said, I for one, I don't want to listen to the curses. But at the same time, I got to listen because that's what I don't want. 
But if you refuse, in verse 15 says, to listen to the Lord your God and do not obey all the commandments, all the commands and decrees I've given you today, all these curses will come and overwhelm you. Your towns and your fields will be cursed. Your fruit baskets and bread boards will be cursed. Your children and your crops will be cursed. The offspring of your herds and flocks will be cursed. Wherever you go and whatever you do will be cursed. The Lord himself will send on you curses, confusion, and frustration in everything you do. And that's the reason why we say God is not a God of confusion. When you find yourself being confused, when you find yourself being frustrated, it's a good time right there to really stop and say, where am I? The Lord himself will send on, on you curses, confusion, and frustration in everything you do. Until at last you are completely destroyed for doing evil and abandoning me. The Lord will afflict you with diseases until none of you are left in the land you are about to enter and occupy. The Lord will strike you with wasting diseases, fever and inflammation, with scorching heat and drought, and with, with uh, blight and mildew. These disasters will pursue you until you die. Isaiah was talking to him, if you go back into the beginning of why we went into the book of Isaiah, it was talking about what it, uh, the coming of the Messiah. But how many of you know that it wasn't just talking about the coming of the Messiah? Right? Isaiah prophesied about the coming of Messiah, but the Messiah, but Isaiah was also talking about the coming of Christ. He was talking about a Messiah that was going to come and die on a cross for them. That they may have grace, that they may have a second chance. But then he also went to say that even at that second chance, many of them would not even know their master's voice. They won't know their master's voice and they will turn and not heed instruction. So in all of that, Isaiah was also prophesying of what was to come. Not just what was going to take place. With the coming Messiah. But what was to come? And if you look at this, many times message, uh, preachers will bring the book of Isaiah when they're talking about the type and shadow of the last days and where we are as the United States of America. How many of you ever heard that? The book of Isaiah talks about the type and shadow of where we are in the last days and where we are as a nation of the United States of America. I know that many times we don't want to admit that Hawaii is a part of the United States of America. But church, legally, we fall under the state, the United States of America. This is why we have to pray even harder. Because if Isaiah is talking about the coming of the Messiah, but also talks about what's the, the coming of Christ and what's going to happen before the coming of Christ, I don't know about you, we talked about last week about living in the days of Lot and Noah. Yeah. This is what it's talking about. The first question was, do you recognize when you are sinning? Right? We talked about that. I'm jumping right into the second part of the, the message that we did. It. I think we just maybe gave a question, but we didn't really jump into it. The second question in regards to the book of Isaiah is, in, in sin, are you still able to communicate with God. Do you communicate God with God? As long as the people of Judah continue to sin, they cut themselves off from God's help and the, they isolated themselves. Remember that God never abandons us. I mean, you are thankful that He never abandons us. Our sins cut off our closeness and communication with Him, leaving us lonely from the one who created us to be in relationship with Him. Again, our sins cut us off of our closeness. The reason why the question was, is in sin, are you still coming to God? You know, sometimes when you know you're far from God, the last thing you want to do is talk to God. And you feel so far from God. But how many of you know that's a part of conviction? Yeah. When you feel so far from God, that's the very time you got to stop and say, wait a minute. I'm not in communication, not in communion. So my, my life is off. Husband and wife, you cannot tell me it's okay for you to go on days and weeks without talking to your spouse. Right. After one day, you feel miserable. Because you know that something is not right. 
This relationship is not pa. It's not established. It's not strong. And that's the reason why the question is, in sin, are you communicating with God? Because I can tell you, when you're doing things that you know you're not supposed to be doing, the last thing you want to do is communicate with God. And again, why? Because your sins cuts you off of your closeness and communication with Him. So that becomes the last thing you want to do, but let me tell you this, it's the first thing you should be doing. It's the number one thing. Cutting off our connection and closeness and communication with God leaves us lonely from the one who created us to be in relationship with Him. The cure for this kind of loneliness involves restoring a meaningful relationship with God through confession of our sins. Obedience to His instructions and regular communication with Him. What is communication with God? I'm not, I'm not just saying communication with God is, um, oh, Father, thank you. Um, Shed and nourish my body. Thank you for the food that I eat. What I'm talking about is a communication is, Lord, Father, I thank you. I thank you, God, because I wouldn't be here today. Father, I wouldn't have the breath of life if it wasn't because of your grace. If it wasn't because of your mercy. Lord, I worship you today. Amen. There is none like you. And next thing you know, you start, you start moving into worship because you cannot help but worship Him. And you say, Father, you are worthy of my prayers. You don't have to wait to Sunday service. You're in your car and you just sing it, Father, you are worthy of my prayers. I come in unto you and bow down before you. You are worthy, God. And then you start telling me, Father, thank you. You are worthy. Yeah. I thank you, Father. I thank you, God, that when I didn't have enough, you always met my needs. Yeah. I thank you for my children. Hallelujah. Father, wherever they may be, I ask you for your hands of protection. Father, Hallelujah. you continue to stir. Hallelujah. You continue to shake. You convict their hearts, Father. Wherever, wherever my husband may be, yeah. Father, stir him up. Lord, shake him up. The things that he's saying may not be of you. Father, shake him up. The, the conversations my wife may be having at work, Lord, shake her up. Hallelujah. Father, because you are worthy. worthy. I call down the door, you are bow down before, before you. you. Father, you are worthy. Amen. Father, thank you for my apostle. Lord, thank speak to my apostle. Yes. Church, that's what you call communication with God. Communicate. And next thing you know, you drive down the road for what, a whole hour, and you know, I got my, my location, you're thinking, how in the world did I get here? I was in worship just praising God and thank you, Father. That's what she called communication. Come on, church. This is not in the days that we live in. Don't have those patty game conversations. Father, thank you for my food in Jesus' name. God provided more than just your meal. He provided more than just your meal, church. He's a good God. Then you go on and you're just switching up the worship songs while you're, while you're singing. Man. Though my words fall short, I got nothing. You? Man. I mean, I sing all the wrong words so much times. My kids looking at me and I'm just like, the words. I don't care. That's a song in my heart. And I just tell him, Jesus. How much I just love him. And I can see the other boy looking at me while I pray, driving out to work, and he laughing. Oh, that's not the right words. That's the words I want to tell Jesus. Man. You better be talking to Jesus. Fellowship. Don't listen to what I'm telling Jesus. I'm not telling you. I'm telling him. Yes. Yes. I may sing all the wrong words, but God knows my heart. Yes. And in my heart, I cry out and say, Father, I cannot make it without you. Hallelujah. I cannot make it without you. Hallelujah. I used to say this to my husband all the time. Shucks, when you become a pastor, life is so lonely. Tell me why. Why do you feel so lonely, Jay? Sometimes you just like, you like say stuff that you just shouldn't say. <laughs> you like act a certain way that you just cannot act. You like act a fool like everybody's acting because I just tired God of this. And you gotta catch yourself. And I told him sometimes, being a pastor, I feel so lonely. All 
right. But the one thing I always do is when I get in my car, and people laugh because I may not look like I walk out of time, but I walk out of time. <laughs> because that's my, that's my worship. Amen. That's the time I tell you that, Lord, I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated, Jesus. And next thing you know, when I thought I couldn't walk 30 minutes, I walked 45 minutes. I told my husband, hey, you would believe. Now I, I jogged 10 minutes out of my 60 minute walk. He goes, yeah, right. I said, no, for real. I, I jogged 10 minutes every every like five minutes here and there. I stop and I jog. I stop and I jog. That, I found that as a time that God was giving me. He was telling me, you don't gotta feel lonely. I never left you. I was always there for you, and I would never give you more than you can bear to me. I'm always there. Here's my encouragement to you. You may not be able to tell everybody how you feel. You may not be able to tell your spouse how you feel. But right. one thing I know is, God, he never leaves you. He never does. He never leaves you. Woo. He never leaves you. Thank you, Lord. My husband went to Canada, and many of you know it was the night before Father's Day. Thank you, Lord. And right before that, he left. And we tried to throw it aside. And he had to leave to Canada. But I'm thinking, God, I'm passaging to you. If I fall, my kids fall. If I get discouraged, my husband will be discouraged. God, and he gave me a church to help my apostle to run. Amen. I cannot fall. Because of this assignment of abuse that we got. I said, Father, I cannot. And here my husband is leaving on a plane. And I looked at him at the airport, at the airport and he told me, We'll get through this. I said, I know. I know we're going to get through this. He goes, I'm in all to be with my mom. And then I didn't tell her anything what was going through. And I'll honestly, I just told her yesterday. This shucks, mom. This is, this is what's been happening. I never told her anything. But as I was sleeping with her, what put me through is I started to pray for her. And my dad wasn't there. He was in Las Vegas with my brother. He took the opportunity to sleep on his bed with my mom. And she didn't know that I needed her more than she not having my dad there. I needed her more. And I didn't say one word to her. And the Spirit of God said, I'm your Alpha. I'm your Omega. I'm your beginning. And I'm your end. And I laid down on a bed next to her. And everything in me, in me, I wanted to say, Mom, this is what's happening. And God told me, I am your healer. I am your healer. Your mom is not your healer, but she can pray her healing through. I laid on a bed next to her and I said, Father, thank you for healing my body. And thank you that I can be here during this time. And as I prayed her through, while she was laying on the side of me, I felt the Spirit of God give me peace. He said, if you can see a miracle in her, I will show you a miracle of what's to come. And you're going to have a testimony. One day you will see. And I lay there, I lay there two nights and three days. I laid there and I said, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you, God. I thank you. I got in the car and I drove home on Saturday. And I started, thank you. Thank you, God. And I started to sing the song for my good. Amen. 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 And I, I sat there and God. I played the music loud. I was telling mom, you okay? I said, son, mom, you're just so blessed. He said, mama, but you crying. I said, son, what you gotta understand is when you have the joy of the Lord inside your heart, I said, you can't help but cry because you're so happy and knowing. Hallelujah. And this is what the, the enemy might say. This is what the doctors may think. But whose report shall we not hear? Oh. I said, all my words for sure. I got nothing. Hallelujah. And I started to sing to God. I said, Father, you will never give me more than I can bear. And that's why yesterday I felt the joy of the Lord when I was walking down. 
and I, I started waving. It was so different for me personally because you know what God is doing for you. You know what He promised me He's going to do. And you can only pray and hope the people on the side catch it. You're looking at me like, Jesus love you. And it's not my heart and say, if you only know what Jesus can do for you. Exactly. I mean, I, I, I could have talked to my husband. I can't express to you how I felt. I've been in numerous Christmas parades. I've been in numerous God's on holiday parade. But this time was like my spirit was shouting for joy. And I was telling the enemy as I walked through the streets, I break every assignment. In the name of Jesus, I'm coming out in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father. I started to walk. That's why, church, when you give the opportunity, when you have the opportunity to, to pray for people, to be a blessing, let me tell you, don't ever back down. Don't ever back down. We went on Friday night, the Y9 Neighborhood Security Watch called to see if we could be a part. We marched by the park where the boy got shot. We walked through all over the street and we marched. And you know, right before that, the enemy tried to send an assignment. Yeah. Send an assignment to me. My, my son and I was, we were waiting on doing it for a possible. Um, they were going on the golf cart. And I just laid my head down and the enemy tried to send an assignment. And, yeah. you know, I, I told myself, I, you're not stopping me from going. You're not stopping me from going. The one thing I'm going to encourage you, every time you have an assignment, the enemy will try to disconnect you. That's the one time you got to step up and you got to say, I'm going, I'm showing up. I told Pastor Jerry, where are you from stage? He said, I'm coming down Mill Street. He said, I'm the side of the road, follow you. We'll follow you off our top of the man in the He said, practice right now. I'm, and, and come pick me up. She said, okay. You know, we got there. And what did they what do? They do the first. I just pulled up with it. Oh, Pastor Jean, you can open up in prayer. <laughs> you know, I write that. I say, you can pray for me first. <laughs> because I just, I just got a blow on the side that I really just tried to get rid of. And the Spirit of God just kept on telling me, you step up for these people. I'll keep stepping up for you. I'll go back for you, Jacob. If you keep Hallelujah. stepping up, stand between the living and the dead. I'll continue to go back for you. Hallelujah. I stood up. I said, okay. You know, Apostle, when you opened a few words, I started to pray. We started to walk. By the end, I felt God just working everything out on my behalf. Yeah. As we were praying and breaking and tearing down every stronghold, every assignment, I felt God just tearing down, taking away every assignment on my behalf. I do want to encourage you. I don't know who this is for, yeah. but the Spirit of God said, you better tell them. You better let them know that Woo. they came for healing. They came for restoration. They got to stop running from the very place that their healing comes from. Amen. Amen. You keep showing up. God will show up at back for you. Amen. He will show up at back for you. You keep showing up. Even when the enemy tell you, people talking about you. Everybody laughing at you. Yeah. People looking at you. He got to step right up and say, you lying devil. I'm here. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Father, I line myself up with you because I will bless, be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. I will be a part of the blessings of Deuteronomy 28. I will be the head and not the tail. I will be above. And let me tell you, yesterday you never looked like the head. Last week you never feel like the head. You wasn't even walking as the head. But God said, but that's okay. My grace is sufficient for you. My grace is all you need. You don't need a pastor to come up and tell you, thank you, thank you, well done. Well done. He is not the one that's your provider. The way the Bible says that God is the rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. Those that diligently seek Him. Amen. Diligently. Hallelujah. Apostle and Pastor Jerry can attest sometimes as a, as a child. You like run and you like, Mom, Dad, I need help. I need this and I need to. I feel this way. Let me tell you, but the best thing God gave you is yeah. for us <laughs> to, like, to learn in my most challenging of time that the best thing is to look up and say, Father, I need you. Yeah. I need you, God. I need Only you. you. Yeah. Only you. Yeah. Why Only did you Jacob do. wrestle with God? Why did he wrestle with angels? Because there was things that needed to get out of Jacob. That's right. Genesis 32 talks about Jacob wrestling with the angel, wrestling with the Spirit of God, because there was things he was selfish. He was what they call the supplanter. He held on to the heel of Esau. 
He was struggling in the mother's womb. Yeah. Why? Esau came up first. So the brother was grabbing him by his heel. And Jacob means serpenter. Okay, this is supposed to be my message next week, but the Spirit of God said, no, bring them all. Oh, oh God, why you need a message next week? I don't know who this is for, but I know that this is for somebody. Amen. Jacob means supplanter or heel grabber. To plant something means to replace it. In this context, it meant to replace by underhanded, undermining his own brother and his own father. Jacob was trying to underhand Esau that was to be bought or to be born first. He tried to pull him down. From the womb, they struggled. Jacob struggled with inferiority. Esau was manly, he was a hunter, he was hairy, and he was big. Jacob was a mama's boy. Mm. Yes. He was a cook in the kitchen. Close to the kitchen. Even Isaac, their father, seemed to prefer Esau over Jacob. There's nothing more I put here, there's nothing more wounding to a man than to not receive love and affirmation from their own father. Every man wants to receive love and affirmation from their own father. And I even say that about daughters. I love my mom. But there's a way that my dad accepts the things that I'm involved in and the things that I desire. That as a daughter and as a woman, it feel, makes me feel secure that my father supports me. Man, or men in the church, this is why your role is so important. Throughout his life, Jacob was determined to get that affirmation from Isaac, which was his father. Even if he had to be shady about it. In, Hebrew, in the Hebrew culture, there's something called primogenitor, which is when the firstborn son got everything from their father, all the land, all the livestock. Being the one of whom the father would depend on to carry the family name and the family business. Jacob wasn't okay with this. He desperately wanted his father's blessing, but he wasn't the firstborn. He was desperate. When Isaac was old and blind, Jacob pretended to be Esau. And you and I know this story too well. He went into his father's room and asked him to pronounce the blessing upon him, pretending to be Esau. He told him, then it was time for you to bless me. You're getting old. And you, you and I know he went in there and he went, uh, the mom helped him, Rebecca helped to yeah. make him more hairy. Yeah. Right? Put the hair upon his, upon his skin. Yeah. Made him smell like his brother Esau. He went in there pretending. Told him because you're getting old, pass on this blessing. Jacob was a hustler. Jacob was a hustler. He underhanded and undermined people. That's the reason why that was his name, Sir Planter. He was always looking for the next thing that he felt could validate him as a man because he didn't feel validated from his father. So he was trying to look to be validated. And led to Jacob wrestling. Why wrestling? I'm not going to let go of you. I'm not going to let... Well, what was, what was he fighting? He finally came to his senses to understand. I need this thing out of me. What happened? This located him. That he was never fully made whole from but in all ways, he was made whole. He wrestled with the Lord. Got that dislocated hip. Finally, spiritually, was made whole to understand. It doesn't matter what line, what, 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 what born you are. Everything that I have, I'm your provider. I'm the one that's going to bless you. If you do what you do, where you are in line, Apostle Tetzola had this book. Uh, I, I know the book, but I, for some reason, I'm train of thought. Um, the gift of the second best. Right? It was a, 
anointing of the the anointing of the second best. I know never forget that message. It changed my life completely. The anointing of the second best. Because it talked about exactly how Jacob was. He wasn't the firstborn. He wasn't the one that's supposed to get everything. But Jacob had to come to learn after getting his hip put out yeah. that God was going to give him everything that man could never give him. Sure. And I remember an apostle did so about that, about the gift and the anointing of the second best. I said, God, help me to serve in this ministry. Yeah. Be totally okay with the anointing of the second best. Because yeah. God, you are my provider. Whether my apostle tell me to sit and do this, whether he tell me to sit and do that, whether he tells I told my husband this, whether my apostle tells me you're only cobbling for a season, I'm good with it because my my obedience to God and to Him is where I'm going to get my blessing from. Let me tell you, church. Sometimes we're looking, we're looking, and we're undermining and underhanding because we think we got to get, we think that belongs to me. We think. I've been there all along. I was the one showing up for corporate prayer. I was the one that opened the door. I've been here Ooh. serving the boss. Why can't he look at me? Why can't they? Why can't my boss promote me? Let me tell you, you sit with the anointing of the second best. Watch and see God exalt you. Why do you think so many people leave? Hallelujah. Because they get discouraged along the way when they see people rise up to different positions that they've been here so long. And they're thinking, what about me? What about me? Hallelujah. Mark my words. God sees all things. He knows all things. You may have been overlooked, so it seemed. People might have bypassed you. But let me tell you this, God will never overlook and bypass you. He sees your faithfulness. He sees your faithfulness. And at times when you think, God, but I've been there. I've been faithful. I've been faithful. You remember this, the anointing of the second best. You've got to be good at sitting and serving. Sitting and serving. Sitting and serving. Sitting and serving. You gotta be good at that because the spirit that's in that is where my blessings don't come from. Stop looking at other things. Your boss might have overlooked you, but you just keep showing up on time. You just keep staying until until your job is done. You keep doing everything you're gonna do. I will never leave you. I will never leave you. And at the end of all of this, you cannot blame man. That's what I love about it. You can't say, but they never do. They never no no no, it's gonna look sick up. Where did I miss it? Because you are the reward of God. Where did I miss it? Show me, Father. Because I want to be blessed in the field. I want to be blessed going in. I want to be blessed going in. And my boss cannot give me this. My pastor cannot give me this. But you can, Father. So if your pocket is empty all the time and you're wondering why, look up to him from where's coming to you. The Bible says the help coming from above. If you keep looking forward, you get discouraged. But when you keep looking up, you cannot see what's looking at you. All you know is, God, I'm going to keep looking up. I'm going to keep looking up. Because yeah. you're my provider. Come on, somebody. Yeah. That's what the word of God said. Never mind what everybody else said. Let me tell you, you be faithful. God will grant you the desires of your heart. He knows. God knows. He will grant you the desires of your heart. Amen. He will grant you. Thank you, Lord. He Thank will grant it. You never heard it. You went to my you. nephew's graduation party. Thank you, Lord. And it started to pour rain. In. My family and I just pulled up. And my husband and I looked at each other. And I told Mark, Honey, I don't know extra clothes. Thank you, Lord. If I step out of the car, we get soaking wet. I said, Shoot. What should we do, man? So we just turn around. I, I don't even know what to, what to do. Next thing I know, the rain just kind of just dwindled and stopped. And the rest of the night was dry. But as we were kind of just pondering, should we leave? Should we stay? What should we do? Thor looked to the side. He said, Mom. I said, Dad. He said, I'm going to go across the street. And we were parked across the street. I said, Son, no. I said, This is Nankuli. The, 
what is that? Not a cool yard. Not a I said, car is just going fast up and down, right? I said, no, we're going to go out. Just, just hold on and wait. He said, I see Papa security. I said, you see what? He said, I see Papa security and Auntie over there. They, they're still over there. And I said, Papa security. He said, right there, right there. So my husband said, oh, you see Richie and Cindy. So I said, oh, son. He said, I'm, I'm going to Papa security. They're going to watch me. So I said, son, they're busy. And I could kind of see that they were trying to help me make, you know, just make things there. He said, no, mom. Papa security, they're going to watch me. You know, and I laughed. Because as innocent as that was, I'm going to tell you what actually he knows. Papa's security take care of my papa and my grandma. Amen. Papa's security make sure my papa and my grandma are safe. Yeah. They make sure my papa and my grandma eat. They make yeah. sure my papa and my grandma is well taken care of. So in Thor's mind was, I would go to Papa's security. Because Papa's security, they're going to take care of me. You know, many a times, Cynthia and Richie, they overlooked Come on, breathe. They're overlooked. Breathe. People just see them standing. People may have the wrong intentions of them. Like, oh, God, they just stop and they're always with the apostle. You know, as a daughter, I will tell you as a daughter what I think. They do for my parents what I cannot do. Come and on. I'm grateful. Breathe. Then why not? When I make a couple of it. All right. They overlook many of times. I saw this couple year after year stand up and serve. No eat now. No eat. When everybody eating, they don't eat. And when everybody cleaning, guess what I see them doing? Eating the leftover that was left. Preach. And they don't get the thank you sometimes that other people get. That's true. That's sinning of the anointing of the second best to know. And let me tell you, they will be blessed in the field. Let's go in and let's go out. They don't to tell people why they do that. What they do. But if my son, five years old, can see that if, they, if I, I, I can be smart, I'm going to be safe with them, that tells me that he sees what they do that sometimes we fail to see. They're protecting the anointing of God upon their lives for the church. I told myself, maybe Richie should have been standing by Donald Trump. <laughs> because Cindy went and wired and go, Rich, he laid on a barn roof. <laughs> yeah. How could you not see 25 feet away, 25, 20 yards away, that there was somebody laying on the roof with a yeah. AR-15? The United States Secret Service yeah. can learn a lot from the people of God that sits yeah. knowing who they are with yeah. as the anointing of the second best. Because yeah. I will tell you this one thing about the people of God when they show up, they show up. Yeah. They show up. Amen. Yeah. Allah was said this morning, but I didn't want to tell you this. That hint that was put was popped out was a good reminder to Jacob. He became Israel. This name change right. eventually. Right. Yeah. Name change. Sometimes we gotta learn to leave those the past behind and get a new name change in God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 God wants you and I to be blessed. See that? I don't know why I can't figure out finish the book by Isaiah. But I don't like to keep talking about the curses. But I wanted to hit that a little bit in the book of Isaiah because it's a warning to you and I where Amen. we are as a state, where we are as a government, where we are as a nation in this time, where we are as the people. That we cannot keep going like this. We cannot keep going, going, and going with a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. True. We cannot keep going like this. God is a good God. Hallelujah. God is a good God. That when you believe that you sin with all fullness, power, and authority, God is a good God. And you're not just telling God is good all the time. All the time God is good. You begin, I mean, now, it irritates you into people just saying that just because, because you don't. Hold up. You deny the power. God is good all the time. All the time. Even when we ain't good. And all the time, God is always good. Thank you, Jesus. He's always good. Because I don't know where I'd be today if he wasn't a good God to me. 
You start to speak with boldness. And you start to speak with authority. Because you know, you're the name above all names. You are worthy of all grace. My heart will sing how great it is our God. It's the reason why when we join together, like we did yesterday, it's easy to come in one mind and one accord. Because you know what God has done. Amen, church? Again, I'm not even close to where I'm supposed to be with this message. I trust and know and believe that whatever God wanted you to be blessed with today, God blessed you with those things. Amen. He blessed you with it. How many of you are thankful that he's a good God?